What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Connected AF Podcast. I am the host, Cottrell Guidry. Today, I'm super excited to interview my friend, uh, fellow artist, Ty Hodges. Now, in this conversation, Connected AF, our goal is to always have authentic, open conversation around different uh, topics and issues that people are afraid to share or to be their our authentic selves. And we're creating a safe space for people to do so. Now, in regards to Ty Hodges, um, this guy's a multi-hyphenate. <laughs> he's a multi, he's incredible. He, he's, he's a writer, actor, director, producer, now music artist. And I got to say the music for your last film was incredible, my man. Um, Ty got his start uh, as an actor when he moved from Miami to LA. And one of his first jobs, this is the only one I'm going to plug, was he was the lead in the Go Deep video with Janet Jackson. Dude, I'm going to say this real quick. That would have been the highlight of my life personally. I'm, I, I'm not you, uh, but that song is dope. Uh, it, the the music video is incredible um and you've done so many big so much so much bigger things than that but for some reason for me <laughs> that is such a huge moment he has worked on disney uh, uh uh you know he's worked with disney on television shows as well as you know balancing a career with many tv hour episodic and major network films and indie films and right now, he currently had a film in Tribeca called Venus as a Boy, which I got to act in. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You did a very it. good job. Uh, and the film won an audience award for the best online premiere. The list goes on. Everybody, Ty Hodges. What's up, everybody? What's up, Cottrell? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, man. I appreciate you. I think you're super talented. But first and foremost, you're a good human being. And I'm glad to call you a brother. And uh, I'm excited to be on this awesome, this thing you, you're manifesting because you said it, now you're doing it. Yes. And I love it. Thank you for having me. Uh, of, of course. And, uh, you know, the, the pleasure is all mine. And in regards to manifestation, um, it is not easy to write something, uh, say that you're going to do it, find money to make it. Because at the end of the day, uh, film, you know, creating film is, is fun, it's artistic, but you need money to do it. So yes. finding money to execute projects and directing it, starring in it, acting in it, going all the way with it. A lot of people talk about that and they don't do it. So I, I commend you for being a man of your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part too. Because you, you, you saw all go up. I want to say all go down. You saw all go up. Yeah. From the beginning, even before then, of you always just being a good person. I think anyone that knows you knows how supportive you are of other people's vision. And you're a person that was always, you know, reinventing themselves. And, and that's why your show is called Connected AF. <laughs> connect. For the, I wanted to, uh, you know, wanted to give a little flavor for yeah. the children. AF, yeah, AF. Because of course, no, nah, man. What's up? What are we? What are we talking about? Hashtag. So you know what I want to talk about right now in the in this conversation is is you being true to your voice as an artist, mm -hmm. right? Because because the amount of success for for many people that don't know you, and we can discuss that part of your life if you're open to it. But the amount of success you reached at such a young age, and to I don't want to say walk away from it, but my interpretation is you kind of analyzed what your voice was and who you were as an artist and bra branched out from that to make uh, your first film miles miles from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so so the the main conversation of this pot around this podcast is what the you know, what are you thinking? <laughs> it, no, not not what are you thinking, no, no, but no. you know, <laughs> as artists, we have an idea of. Uh, you know, especially as actors, a lot of actors have an idea of how things should go. 
right? Like you talk to an actor and you can tell when they don't have a real vision for their career. Um, and it's not a knock, but, you know, a lot of people base how their career should go around how other people's career should go. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to know when you had a moment where you're like, no, I want to do my career my way. Well, it's funny because I'm, I'm understanding it now, right? I never in real time, present time, when you're like, you know, experiencing success or whatever. And for me, as soon as I got to LA, like it just, I was just going and I had, you know, my family were from Miami and, you know, I grew up in a Caribbean environment. They didn't even know that it's possible to do what I was doing, right? They, they went to my plays and went to talent shows, but they never knew like, like when I started having like big picture, they're just like, okay, well let them go to LA and had that support. But as I was out here, I think in real time, I was processing it because it was fun for me. Like I did this in school, I went to art school. So I'm like, the difference is, is like, now people see you, you know? And I think that was the first thing I had to get used to. Like I'm out here like two months and I'm like the Jan Jackson boy, you know? And I'm like, what? And I'm like, like, oh wow. Like you do something, it goes in this tube in the television that impacts the whole world. And then people that don't know you are gonna feel like they know you and they're gonna like see you. So it's like immediately when that happened, I was thankful that I, you know, I kept my faith and I kept, um, I kept kind of focused on the goal. Like, I just want to express myself, you know? And then as I got older, I realized that comes with responsibility, like anything. And so I think a lot of times when people want fame or they want money or they want success, they don't, they're not present in it to look around and be like, okay, where's this going? So in real time, I didn't know I'm going to write and direct. I just started feeling like, I never forget. I was like, I had three jobs at once. And any actor that's like, that's like, that's like where you want to be, you know, where your schedule is being organized by these three different productions you're going to go in. And I remember sitting in my dressing room and just feeling like there's something to this, right? Like, yeah, there's something more to this. And because I, I was, it's not that I wasn't fully satisfied. I just realized like, this, there's a responsibility with this. There's like a, a mental health, you know, responsibility with this. And like, you know, my faith was very strong. So as I was kind of discovering why I didn't feel satisfied, it was like me wanting just to add more purpose in my, my career, my life, and just be like, just an actor, you know? Yeah. And I think getting to the point where I'm at now, whereas like every film that I've done, I've grown not only as an artist, but most importantly as a person. And so I think I'm finally getting to the point where it's like, I'm looking back and, and, and there's so much gratitude towards where I've come from. At the same time, when you're in real time, you feel like you're, you're I'm present where it's like, I'm not doing enough. Like uh, I'm not creative enough or I'm not artist enough. And I think every artist goes through this kind of like, you know, feeling like where they at because everyone around you has a perception of what success is. You yeah. have a perception of what success is. And at the end of the day, it's just all about being happy and being around, like being around people that love you, that, that hold you accountable. But not only that, like you being, you know, aligned with your spirit and who you are. And, and that is important because as we fall off of our purpose or we, we don't, you know, we don't think we have a purpose or we question our purpose or we question what we're doing. It's just bigger than being an entertainer for me or like a artist. It's like, yo, am I like present enough to enjoy what I'm experiencing? It? And am I aware enough to know that I need to keep it moving? I need to level up. I need to be inspired. I need to be around creative people that are really about shifting and contributing to narratives versus like just showing up, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, when we have our conversations, because, and I, I've been having these conversations a lot, because I think that now that a film is in Tribeca, people around me are seeing like, oh, wow, he's been at it for a while. But me, I'm like, yo, I'm still just going. Like, I'm not even, there's no limitations. And, I, and I'm not, I don't want to put opportunities so much on a pedestal because of how people perceive it i'm learning to be that i'm mature and present enough to enjoy it you feel me yeah yeah so. and, and for and for context just just so the audience understands right because you know you and i've had this conversation about your past 
and being known as as a, being put in that box, right? It's like, oh, he was on this show, or I recognize him from this, and now he's here. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we talked about the recognizability. Is mm-hmm. that even more? Pop- <laughs> but, you know, recognizability. But, yeah. Popularity, but, which yeah. now anyone can be recognizable, right? Or like yeah. a celebrity or influencer. Yeah, but for for context. Uh, can you give, you know, the audience just a little bit of, of history on from coming, you know, from Miami to L.A. Janet Jackson video and then to Miles from Home? You know, just a quick just a quick overview of that and how quickly how quickly that happened for you. Yeah. So basically, I grew up, you know, in Miami, Florida, and. I grew up in an environment where my mom's side of the family, when they decide to go to a place in America, they picked Miami, which a lot of people pick New York, Canada, UK. So I grew up heavily raised by my mom's side um, and their intention on like making a better life for her, her family, their kids, everything. So I was born into this, you know, this born into this and, and raised in this family that is a lot more conservative than my parents are but i mean there's no but however they blessed my parents with the support to help raise us in an environment where you know we're always having to show up and be thankful for representing our family right and legacy and all that stuff so at a kid that's pressure but i never fit in and so i grew up a fourth grade teacher saw something in me and that's how i got into like art schools And so art schools are like my thing, right? I was like, oh, this is, I'll wake up early in the morning and I'll be in plays and all this stuff. And as I started to evolve as a creative artist, I ended up getting this Calvin Klein campaign with Burdines, which is like Burdines was like a Macy's in Miami. And it kind of changed my life because it was the first time that I did like a real project where people saw it and it was like, and I'm like a kid that goes to art schools, but I started doing like little modeling and commercial gigs and I'll come to school and in a weird way, I get bullied for that, but yet I was like, oh, this is my calling. Like, I wanna do it all, I wanna do plays, I wanna TV. So then um, I kind of convinced my parents along with like a, a guy by the name Anthony Stafford that I grew up with. He was like a mentor in a way, but he's he was like alumni at my high school, art school and a nonprofit I did, Voice United. Yeah. And when I did this commercial, people were like, oh, this kid got it, you know, he got it. And so him, myself, my principal at the time kind of came with a plan to go to my parents because on set, I didn't even know like California was a, I knew it was a real place, but like, you know, when you think of California, like, oh, palm trees and like safe by the bell. Yeah. And Rebecca Romaine Stamos at the time, she was like, she was like, yo, you should go to LA. You know, you have this thing called pilot season. So it was like amazing that all these people around me were like kind of helping me plot this plan. So I came out to LA and I was out here and I was like, had to found an agent, got on a bus the next day, had yellow pages. And I'm just like a, you know, 16 year old kid, like I'm gonna do this. And I was so focused and so like driven that anyone would think my parents are crazy or I was crazy or delusional, right? Yeah. But I was so like, the calling felt so strong in my heart that I just showed up. So the first day I got here, I got lost in the building, got an agent. Had to go back, you know, basically do a monologue. They sign me, they call my parents and make sure I had parents. They were like, you know, okay, well, he's here for a month. We're going to send him out on everything. And like two weeks before I was, I booked like two commercials and two weeks before I was was supposed to go back, I ended up walking this cattle call for a Jan Jackson video. And like, I stand in a line and looking like for all, you know, kids, all races. And I just stand in line and I think I'm ready to like do my best Janet Jackson moves. And it wasn't dance at all. And then they were just like, open the door and act like you see Janet Jackson. And they did the profiles and they said, smile. And they just was like, just talking to me. And then fast forward, I ended up getting that. And my mom had to fly out here because it was a longer job. And I needed like a, the other jobs I could like rent an, a, an adult for the day. But yeah. this was like, I needed my mom to come out here because I was, I think I just turned 17 and uh, did the video. And you don't know how, I don't know how things are going to edit. So I do the video, move on with my life. And then the video comes out. And like my whole family in Miami and Barbados, Trinidad, and you, everyone in my family was out there like, dang, this kid said he was going to go out there and do it. And he did it. And so everyone, I'm walking around. And I'm like, and then from there, Janet invited me to her video and Disney Channel executive was there and saw me. And Disney oh, wow. called and was like, we're doing this show. 
Um, it's called Jet Jackson and we want you to come in. And so I went in there and I ended up getting it and was flown to Canada. And then from there, they saw they saw that and then they were doing this movie, Don't Look on the Bed. And, and after that, I just kind of was like swooped up into this like machine of Disney. And I loved working with them because it felt like a family, you know, it was like a great space for me to be with kids my age. At the same time, I have like this whole other life that I left behind, you know, where not experiencing like a junior and senior year, but having a taste enough of high school and like yeah. friends that I was secure with. Do you see now the benefits of being thrust into adulthood at a young age? And then uh, do you also see kind of how it's, how it's hindered you or, or do you feel like it's all, it was all positive in that regard? Yeah, I think for me, I could see both. I think it was all positive for me because I came from like the stage. I came from, I was in a ballet company for three years. Like I was yeah. already working, just not having, it wasn't as transactional financially, you know? And so it did teach me like craft. It did teach me like discipline, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm very thankful for. And I think it's important having like a strong foundation and, and, and family and morals and like integrity, things that you're taught at a young age. But I do see how if I didn't have those things and I was really focused just on the fame that I could have gone a different direction, which made me feel very much like I just want to do more. I want to say more. And these pockets are great, but I'm growing out of them, which I think yeah. that's the hardest thing as a creative, right? Like you can easily stop growing in your craft. You can easily get comfortable. And the more wealthy you become and the more famous you become, it's easier for you to be content with what you have. I think there's certain people, certain creatives that are always going to push, you know, push the envelope. And the way they do that is that they like live life in their truth. Yeah. And they take that time away to like really figure out where they're at, who they're around, what's inspiring them. That's new. They travel, they, they kick it with the locals. They, they experience life and they allow that to kind of come into who they are at that point when they create. So I think for me, I was naturally doing that, just not, you know, as, as a, as a, you know, teenager into adulthood, I realized like that's kind of the thing where it's like, you have to take time to be present all the time and just enjoy and understand that one, you're here for a reason, but two, like how powerful, inspiration is right and how that comes to you so getting to the point where i made the decision to you know start writing movies i didn't know what i was doing you know control like i didn't i really didn't know i was just like i'm gonna take 15 grand and i'm gonna make a movie with my friends and like really you know understand like filmmaking and i was a student on set because i talked to the crew i talked to the grip so i kind of knew how things go but i think by the time I made my first movie, even into now, it's all, you know, I have to give that like honor, not to myself, but just like, you know, having that drive that I had, you yeah. know, when I was young, that I haven't lost. And I have to protect too, because it's so easy to get jaded. Most people in the business is long. It's so easy to be like, have no growth and be jaded and be content, right? Um, but for me, I'm like, nah, like, I think there's so much more. And I think everyone should think that way. Like, yeah. regardless if you're not in entertainment, you should always feel like if you have more and if you don't have more, it's all good. But I think what makes life exciting is like that you're falling in love again with, you know, with a craft or a, a career over and over and over again, and you're reapproaching it and getting better. And instead of working harder, working smarter, I think that's the thing that I'm realizing now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, you know, there's, there's an evolution in art always. So I seeing miles from home, your first film from, from where you were, uh, did you feel, you know, did you have that feeling that you were kind of being forced into a box when you were still in, in the kind of the network system? Cause miles from home was super rebellious. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I cut my hair off when I got a red mohawk, you know? <laughs> so yeah. But that's just what I was feeling, you know, not even like, it's funny that word rebellious. I feel like I've been, I've been hearing that a lot now, but you, you know, you're right. My first movie was probably super rebellious and 
it was me not saying anything, but like, you know, like, who are you as a creative? Like, what you trying to do? And again, comfort, you get lazy. And so I think, I think you're, I think you're right. I think unconsciously I knew like I want to do something that was going to expand the way people saw me. Yeah. Because I think that's the great thing about, you know, the opportunity to be creative is to not be predictable to the surprise and not give everything in that, you know, one job. And I think for me, it was very easy, you know, to, you know, get caught up in a box at a young age of showing up for this one thing and people only seeing you for this one thing. Hmm. And so for me, I guess, I guess rebellion with action is, is, is is like a lot to me i i think when i understand rebellion when i attach action and intention and purpose to it i mean i'm I'm good with that but there's a lot of people that are like mad rebellious and they just are rebellious just to be rebellious right yeah yeah yeah. and uh stupid or like blah blah blah, versus like okay this is what it is but let me contribute something yeah i mean there's there's like there's this there's the shock value right it's you know it's there's a this is a new age where you can you know you can drink a gallon of milk on a TikTok and throw up and and all of a sudden you're you're viewed, you're, you're viewed over like a million times you know what i mean million views yeah but yeah, and you got to do that again and again and again to keep them yeah yeah views. yeah what's what's next for you and but i think the interesting part about your your situation is right like fighting against that comfort most Mm -hmm. you know especially actors um you know we catch a uh, we could catch a taste of 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 what we deem as success and and think it's going to be that way always Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like there's nothing promised in this industry so the only thing you can do is be true to yourself yeah so you know so when you when you were transitioning from uh, you know, kind of the Disney cycle and, and the television and film cycle into miles from home. Did you have pushback from uh, your representation, your peers, your family, or were, did you feel support? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, <laughs> everyone, everyone thought I was going crazy. Well, everyone let's talk like, about that. Cause that, this is like, you know, this, this is need, real. This is, this yeah. Is people real. need to and hear this. Stuff. And yeah. And, but no, I mean, when I, when I, when I was doing Miles From Home, it, it was like a progression where I started not auditioning for certain roles, right? And I think as an actor, when I first got into it, you want all the auditions. Yeah. Like if a homie's going out for something, you're like, yo, what's that? I want that. Like, no matter if it's a football player role, um, no matter if it's like anything that you're not right for, the arrogance of an actor sometimes is like, I can do that. Yeah. Like, I want this role. They're doing this. And, and so growing up in a culture like that, where it's like, you know, I went from where the parents are there at the auditions with you and they're talking and they're like, oh, you know, they're doing this movie or they're doing this movie. And I got out of that culture real quick because I started realizing like, actually I was crazy. I was like, yo, you're better for this role. I would get auditions and call a home and be like, yo, I got this audition, but I think you're better for it. I think you should go out for it. And that's when I started realizing like that, that, that my, my calling is different because I was so giving well like and then I realized I started getting real like when my agents at the time would 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 really want me to go you know I would go in some like flip-flops and jeans and a shirt when usually actors dress like the role so I'd be like gangsta and I'll be like wearing some like you know some flip-flops I know my lines but I'm like going into as me playing a thug not like what was written and so these little like I would say uh outbursts or my reaction or being probably calm and reactive in a very interesting way I think my agents and parents started realizing and it was from two point of views my parents were being like is this still making you happy do you still want to do this because we'll Mm -hmm. go back to Miami like you don't have to do this. And that was safe for me because I'm like, hey, my family moved all the way here for me and they're willing to like, they want to be happy. Yeah. At the time I was like, should I go to Juilliard? Should I go to New York, you know, NYU? Like, 
this is not fulfilling. And mind you, I'm like still playing a teenager, you know? How old were you at this point? Like 25, 20, you know, 25. Oh, you were 25 playing a teen teenager. 20, yeah, 25 is when I started Miles From Home. So I'm like mad late bloomer coming into like, and then I, when a, an executive, a mentor had a conversation with me, she's like, what's up? You're not happy? And then those conversations started building into being like, no, I love this. I want to do this. I just feel like this, there needs to be some growth in me. I need to like, you know, do this at a real level where I'm showing up and being present. So that evolution, you know, I had agents were thinking I'm crazy. Like, you're going to make a movie. Okay, good luck. I never forget the agent that was like, I told him I'm going to do a movie that I don't want to audition for like, like, I was like, yo, I don't want to audition for like seven months. Like, I want to get this movie done. And the movie took me a little bit longer to do, but I'll never forget like dropping off the movie Miles From Home for him. Yeah. And he called me and he's like, wow. And the conversation we had out of all, you know, the times where he thought I was crazy or he was like, you know, how are you going to make money? Like, you know, you're not going into these rooms. People are going to forget about you. When he saw the movie, it, everything that he mentioned kind of was saying, keep doing this. Yeah. And mind you, I don't know if the movie was dope or not. Like, I just was like, didn't know what I was doing. I think that's the beautiful thing about when we're still stay connected to that child innocence of not worrying about what people think about you and you're just free. That's what that movie had. And it was completely outside of the way anyone saw me. Hmm. And I think that triggered something in me and then co-creating and collaborating with filmmakers. Now people look at me like a director and a writer. And I'm like, yo, I didn't even know that that was something that people would see me as. And uh, yeah, and now I'm here, you know? And I think now it's like, you keep doing this over and over again with, you know, I never want the thing to limit me as like, you know, when you make it, you know, cause it's like, you're alive, you, you've made it here. You yeah. know, and every day we wake up, we wake up that we've made it to this day, right? Yeah. And um, I feel like this movie, and you know, seven's a great number, but for this film, I feel so refreshed as like a creative to where it's like this for me, you know, this film for me is like a good wash over to start new, but start from like an authentic truth where it's like, People, you know, reviewers may not like this movie because I'm literally intentional with not making it what we've seen before. Yeah, Venus, you mean, you're talking about Venus, right? Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. Venus. Like, you know, all the movies I did before, I'm thinking plot, technique, style. You know, I'm an actress director. So I'm like, I put myself in films. I haven't put myself in films as a lead role since Miles From Home. You know, everything yeah. I've been kind of supporting because I feel very connected to movies. but. I was like, yo, I'm going to take this on camera because I really want to get back into in front of the camera and producing. And, you know, I don't have to direct everything. I don't have to write everything. But I think I have enough, like, uh, I have enough, like, there's so much more in me to show, right, that I needed to kind of wash away and make a film like this. And now everything's kind of, there's a lot of clarity, right? The fog is off to where it's like, oh, this, I just started a new wave of, like, creation and freedom and responsibility. And where I'm like, anytime I feel ego in it, I'm just like, yo, get out of it. Versus like yeah. battling it, you know, or battling and an outsider or people can easily view it as like, you know, oh, you know, he just will do all the things. And I'm like, there's a lot of people that do all the things. You know, I think a lot of times uh, people feel like they don't have the permission to do that. Yeah. I, I encourage them to do whatever you want to do. And for me, as much as I know people are going to love this movie and not like it and polarize, especially reviewers, I'm like, yeah, I intentionally did that. So the other day we had like a bad review I read and I'm like, that's the movie I wanted to make. So yeah. I kind of get offended. You know, I was just like, word, like, but I'm, but I think if I ever get caught up in director, writer, actor, like those things, because best believe I want to make some box office monsters because now I feel like I'm to the point where I understand my voice and that and how it's evolving to then position films that are more commercial with that texture and without feeling like 
are people going to like it or not? Hmm. Um, because if I could continue to make films where people are able to look in the mirror at themselves and take it personal enough to like write paragraphs, then I'm good. <laughs> like, yeah, if it's not good. You just turn it off, you know? But if, I mean, if they, you know, as long as they're talking about you, right? <laughs> yeah, and how long they're talking about you? For. Yeah, I mean, look, it, the fact that somebody is feels it important enough to to speak on a piece of artwork sa says a lot. You know what I mean? It, it, it that that shows that something definitely shook you know shook them up enough to want to comment on it. Um, yeah. But as far you know, I want to go back to you. My bad, I'm rambling too much. I feel no, like I'm no, talking no, to my it's, friend. It's, it's, it's okay. No, I, I love it. I oh, love I'm it. really talking to my friends. <laughs> no, no, no. It's hey, this is this is why we do this. Um, so I want to when after you know seven films down, did you ever try to go back to the old system that you were used to, or was it more like I found this is my purpose? I'm gonna stick to making movies. No, I think now I'm like I I think once well, I. Like, Sorry. sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's like so. So you made you made Miles from Home. You made, yeah. I mean, you you have Video Girl. You have a, a you me in the circus. You have a huge slate of accomplishments. Which you know, just to be able to to uh, build teams, like each each film is a new. It's the you're birthing another child, right? Seven kids, bro. Yeah, it's having seven you got, kids. You got seven kids in film form. Right. So yeah, after the first, after the first <laughs> film, did you try to go back to the system? Did you go back to auditioning? Did you go back to the agent world? Did you go back to all that? Or were you like, Hey, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write films and I'm going to make them because I have a voice. What was that for you? It's weird. Cause I tried to go back, but I really didn't like, I just kind of was going. Yeah. I was just going like it was like so I mean I'll wear a movie that. out I go to like the 20 festivals even if you know what I'm saying like, yeah I didn't understand it I didn't understand the independent film culture okay and so it was it was more of a natural transition for you like it opposed to like a conscious decision where you made the conscious decision I'm not going to audition for seven months because I want to make this movie right yeah. that was a conscious decision yeah and 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 walked away from a lot of money you know yeah. Um, I'm not saying I have my Dave Chappelle moment, but it kind of feels like you just got to step back. And if, you know, if you look at someone like Dave Chappelle, look how much more fruitful he is for the culture now, you know, that he did do that. What if he didn't do that? You know, like now people look at Dave Chappelle, like, what does Dave think? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, you know, he's gonna come from real. And by no means I am saying I am, to that man's level. That man is on another level. Let me clarify that right now. That dude is phenomenal. But I think when you have certain artists like him, and we can listen to Andre 3000, you know, um, Erica Badu, Lauren Hill. I mean, you have, so I'm just putting this in real quick. Fixing um, up that lighting? No, I'm putting that battery in, bro, before I oh, shut down. Oh, oh nice, ain't, nice, nobody, nice. No, ain't nobody talking to you. <laughs> uh, there'll be nobody here um i think every there's just artists that that go through that process where they just want to be truthful in what they're doing yeah and so i think at an early age you're right like i had that and i i, I think people will call me an audition and i think there was like i did two independent films in the interim because i was just trying to like find my way I think what really got me the business is when I sold the show to Fox. That was like a new thing that I'm like, oh, I could do this. Like, yeah. And I could do it this way. And I never thought I could. So it was like a situation that surprised me and I'm still like amped. And from then I just been writing TV shows. But I think that there's space for everyone to, to do what we're doing. I think it's just about you can't make space for yourself if one, you don't feel safe and two, you don't know your space. You don't know what you're gonna contribute. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's funny. To, I, I wanna touch on that transit, uh, that new level of when you sold that show to Fox, right? Cause 
you had all those years of being the independent guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the Fox, the Fox thing, it wasn't like, you know, you and I were still really close, but it was, I don't feel like you were calling people to be like, yo, man, hey, guess what I just did? Yeah, and I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, yeah. deadline article, uh, Hollywood Reporter. You know, it was, eh, eh, so I'm, I'm curious how, how that transition happened because network TV is extremely different from yes. the, independent, the independent film world. Yeah, and hard. I mean, to, the amount of hoops yeah. you have to jump through, yeah. correct? Yeah, and, I, and I'm thankful to, to Ralph, the executive that was able to shepherd that. You know, he's been in the game for a long time and he's, he's trusted by networks and he knows how to run a show, you know, so I got to give much props to him because he saw something in me and brought me into the room and then they got to see it. You know, he can only set me up. I think, yeah, you're right, I didn't tell anyone. And I was just in it, dude. I didn't even know, like, I didn't even know about um, the trades like that. I didn't know how powerful they were. I didn't know that people are gonna hit you up all around and you're gonna be the cool kid, you know? I didn't, I'm not ever doing it for other people. I'm doing it for me to discover how I can, again, like service other voices, right? And like, I got really, you know, I, I wanna be a part of creating opportunities for voices that aren't heard or like people that aren't seen. I can only do that if I like am truthful here, right? So when that happened, it was like, that. that's one of those moments in my life where I was just, it's weird, dude. It's like, it's like, oh, people are taking me serious now and I've been taking myself serious this whole time, right? And so oh. it, it was, it, I had to really like, and you know how it is, Control. Like when you, you know, we all have Instagram and people use it for the highlight reel, right? Like, yeah, I have to be mindful that I'm not, you know, making it a highlight reel. I also am a private dude, so how personal am I going to engage? Um, also, I'm independent right now, so that's the only way I could kind of get support. So, the portal that social media uses is great because you see like a lot of people making their business off of it. I didn't know that when I did this, that it was that my world was going to change around me, but I'm still like, I've been taking myself serious and I'm doing the work. Yeah. So I think now when I go sell more shows, God willing and, and align with the right team and align with people that uh, see me or see my voice and see like it can contribute. I'll be able to handle that a little bit, you know, different. And because I was so like a lot of people when they get through the TV, they're like, we're assistants. You know, they climb their way up through assistant writer, yeah, associate producer, story editor. So all these layers that I didn't realize that I jump, I only realized when I got in the room and I'm having other writers been like, I've been, you know, assisting or creative uh, editor or, staff writer for this amount of time and I'm still trying to sell a show and I'm in the room being like yeah so blah blah, blah. and a, an actor and I'm not realizing like how much gratitude and how much how thankful I am to be in this position also like my maturity and my purpose and like understanding the dynamic with the with the network and understanding everyone's like initiative to like make this a hit show yeah now coming from the independent world doing that to now jumping back in the independent world that's why i made being as a boy it was me to get rooted in like okay well if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna you know like i want to do tv a lot you know and i understand that that's a different type of brain that's the corporate brain that's the brain where it's not my voice it's a voice and it's a voice that is surrounded by the right support the right executives the right network and bam put out there into the world that i understand and i needed to go through that that muscle to then go independent and realize these are two separate worlds. And then say, for instance, if I direct the next Spider-Man or say, for yeah. instance, if I play the first Black Peter Pan, <laughs> you know, like I'm looking at my career with the right dose of strategy at the same time, like focused on like my intention with growing a career. And you, you know, there's great creatives, they do that. They're always, you know, stepping up on, on the time where it's for them, not on time where people think they can go. Because once you hit that ceiling 
of your success, then it's like that, that saying, what goes up must come down. Like the faster you get there, the more you're just gonna, you're just gonna, and then your projects and your voice is gonna, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, slower, like I'm glad that it's been hard. Like it's hard going slow. It's hard, bro, <laughs> like patience. Like you want things to happen like now. Yeah. You, you just, in the, I just thought about something in the conversation around, around the series, right? You know, I was talking to a very, a, a fr my friend who is a talented uh, writer and director. She's having a moment right now. And, and we had that, that hard conversation around black writers, black creatives, and I think this is the part that people who aren't in this in the industry don't understand. You know, she was telling me how she knows so many she had, so many of her friends, black writers, have sold projects that have never been made. Mm -hmm. And a normal person would be like, "Whoa, whoa, they still got the money." Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. thing is, when you're an artist and your project doesn't go, it's almost like the money is a constellation prize. Mm -hmm. it still stings, you know, and, and I think that's something we get to take a look at, you know, an industry where it's like, you know, black people, they write, you know, they write, they direct, they produce, they do all these things. And, you know, it still has to be like, oh, I need to do this on my own, right? Because the industry is not going to, I don't always feel the support of the industry. You know, so I'm kind of curious, like from an authentic place, you sold the show. I know you had a 10 episode order. All right. Yeah. I, I believe. You're good at this. Look at you. All your information. My boy is like facts. Yeah. Yeah. You had a 10 episode order and then it didn't go on the screen. You know mm -hmm. what that what that must feel like, even though you got paid. How did that, you know, like you're an artist, right? Well, thank God I made the sizzle reel. So that's going to live forever. Yes. I sold it off of that. But yeah, you're right. But the thing is, that's where you, that's where it's like the micro decisions that we make in life are so important because yeah, it could have gone, but what would have, would it have lasted? Would I have been mature enough to deal with it? Yeah, and I forget our premiere date. We had a premiere date, which is even more like it was going like we were there and, and it premiered on the day that was at that shooting at that uh, gay club in Orlando. Oh, wow. And you remember that big shooting? Yes, man. I remember that. You know, it, it was it was absolutely horrible, terrible. horrible. And I never forget my cousin that we talk and we're very like she's very in tune. She's like. Can you imagine if the show came out that day? Because they were promoting on Twitter, like, you know, famous June 12th, you know? I think it was June 12th that happened. I want to be, I want to be sure. Let me be accurate. Shooting in Orlando. I don't want to, because that really broke my heart, dude. And dude, uh, I was on, I was on set of the first film I ever did in Texas. And I, I, I read it. I read the whole story of what took place. It was June 12th. Yeah was crying on set. People were like, yo, are you bawling. okay? I was bawling and I was yeah. very much, it brought everything down for me, right? I was just like, I, we just found out the show wasn't, you know, going. And then this happens. And I was like, and my cousin was like, can you imagine how you would have, like, you're trying to promote a show and this happens? And so not to get too deep about it, but to me, I was just like, you know, humanity is the biggest thing that we got to hold on to Yeah. as we are creatives, because you, you know, when you, when you are in this space, you know, this industry, you know, when you get to a certain place, right. You have a platform, you have a voice, but you almost, you have to like protect yourself and your space naturally because you're now a thing or you're now a brand or you're now all these things. And so, you know, all you can do is use your platform, you know, for good. And everything you do is to progress, discuss, uh, create spaces where people are able to like 
look, you know, into themselves and almost work to love themselves more to be a better human to love others, right? Yeah. So for me, when that happened, it, what took what was important, I, it wasn't even about the show after that. It was about like, yo, we're living in a world where people can be this like, this cruel, this amount of hate. And so what it did was it furthers me to like always create from that space to be like, yo, we gotta like love each other more. And, and we gotta, we gotta like really realize like life is, is hard. And yeah. everybody that wakes up every day, especially in adulthood, everything they deal with just to like, there's so much humility in it. And I think the pandemic really brought people to a space to question their mortality, to question their existence, to question what matters. And us finishing the movie in, in, you know, in the pandemic, that's what I kept thinking about. Like this movie in the film business and television is so important to me. Like it's been one of the biggest priorities and in, in the realest commitment, the realest relationship, right? But there's another side where it's like, why well, are you just living to experience that? Are you living just to have the highlights or get that job or all these opportunities are, you know, you put them on pedestals or are you literally just like enjoying being alive and, and, and discovering joy, right. In different ways, enjoying the simplicity of just like dealing with yourself, right. Like understand what healing is. And I think these are things where, if you're going to create and if you want to do dope things and I'm trying to I'm trying to like of course make great content make a lot of money so I could do good with that a lot of money right but I think there's a point in time where you can't really do that if you're just focused on like everything's about your career because yeah. then that becomes your identity and then you're not even really existing in like real human spaces to then create from a place where it's going to inspire people you know or like entertain people you know so what like then in I just got, I was just... no you're riffing it's okay but I, there's a couple things i want to touch on um the first one is is then how do you how do you find that balance to maintain your authenticity in a you mean in, like in people in people no in a career that's very image driven money driven um you know trying to figure out what the what the community what the world's going to like opposed to you know hey i'm gonna make this movie this is exactly how i want to make it and this is what people are gonna get you know what i mean mm -hmm. does that does that make sense does that question make sense can i can i respond back what i think you're asking so i could because i'm gonna try yes to make, please 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 your podcast. i'm trying to make them real short um are you saying that, how do you, are you, how are you able, how do you make content that you don't care if people like? How do, how, are, are, how do you maintain your authentic voice without being concerned about the money part? Is everybody going to like this? Mm -hmm. how do you maintain being true to yourself and your art within that scope? Word, word. Yeah, well, I, I think I know when something doesn't feel authentic with me. Okay. And I think we all know that. We all know even like, you know, when something doesn't feel right. And Venus is a boy, you know, I really want it. Like my next film is mad commercial, you know, um, because of the way I'm setting it up. However, the way I've been able to get to this point is I've been betting on myself to get there, to finally engage, you know, when a studio is paying a lot of money for you to make a movie. Now I understand that relationship and I understand how I have to show up in that, right? So it is about like making sure I deliver what they paid for so they can get paid. I've had the freedom and the liberty to do things independent as almost like my film school, right? To, yeah, you know, a lot of movies I've made, I wasn't 
balling. You know, a lot of times people set up a movie and they're like, get mad money or every everything that I've had been coming in has been solely from like me coming with an idea, me putting a lot of energy into it to manifest it, be have doubt swim around, have insecurity swim around, have all the like human things we all deal with, right? Why you're like, oh, I see this. But then when, when you see it and you realize like, you know, like this film, I feel like it's gonna be polarized, right? You're like, I was true in that mm. whole process. My integrity, I didn't get over on anyone. I didn't make, you know, everyone got paid. I didn't get paid, but I'm gonna get paid a lot coming soon, right? Like I'm gonna yeah. get, I'll have that opportunity. But the reason why I feel so good about, because it's not like, oh, I'm doing it my way. And you did the movie with me. It was never like, oh, it's my way. Like you brought your light to it. Olivia brought her light to it. Trace brought her light to it. DP, wardrobe, catering, everyone. That was a fun set to work on. To yeah. whereas I still talk to people every day. And they're like, yo, the next movie, the next movie. That shows me that the movie is going to go somewhere. Because yeah. the experience, the DNA that the, that the, the movie has, that's why it's going to land where it needs to land. And as long as it creates conversations and as long as it, you know, gets me to the next level where I am going to be truthful, you know, that's the purpose of that. Getting, you know, it getting into Tribeca is a blessing. It having, you know, winning award, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just getting warmed up to go on to the next journey, right? Whereas like, I may not have that amount of freedom, but at least I got it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and I know the things that, that are my things to put into it. But yet I'm here to make sure that this movie made for this amount is gonna be flipped and executed. And that's what the right people that are solely about the business will balance out my show of their business. You know, that's why they call it show business. Yeah. So does so, that make sense? Yeah. Your question was very dynamic. You have some dynamic ass questions, control. I'm just trying to make sure. But that that did that help or that it it support it supported. I for for just so the audience knows, can you give? I want to go deeper into the film Venus is a boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you're busy, but hey, you got you go about That's, you awesome. got about ten minutes for your boy. So it's you. It's you. Yeah, man. we're gonna, we're we're gonna touch on this. For the audience, uh, can you give the log line of the film so they understand what it's about? And then we can, and then I want to go deeper into it. You know, I'm not good with the log line. You're the first person to ask me about the log line. It doesn't have to be, it could be more than one sentence. Okay. But the compacted version of what the film, what the story's about. Okay. Let me, let me. All right. Venus is a boy is about a struggling artist discovering self-love on his journey of creation while ignoring his fears and meeting a beautiful woman as he's embarking a new chapter of clarity that happens to turn his world upside down throw everything around in the room and he realized it's his responsibility to keep his own house clean. Interesting. I like, I like that. I mean, I don't know. I, I was... No, because I, I, <laughs> that's what I, at least that's the movie that I hope that I, yes, yes. I, I was hoping you touch on the re responsibility aspect of it, you know, because Hunter was a, for me, Hunter was a very, um, he did not feel like he was of the world, mm -hmm. right? In the sense that Hunter wanted to stay true to himself, true to, his, true to his art, true to who he was as a person, yet he always found himself in relationship with uh, women who were successful, who could possibly take care of him on his journey, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So I like how you rounded out uh, the responsibility he aspect. Has to yeah, he yeah has he's to the one that needs to keep, he can't depend on everybody else 
to keep his house clean. He has to keep his house clean. Yeah, and it's not it's not their job. Like I don't want to villainize the yeah. women. Um, but what's interesting is that we don't see a movie like he's never usually the lead of a movie, and that was very intentional for me. Like, what is this guy that exists in a lot of people's life? Like, I know Mad Hunters. I'm sure you know Mad Hunters. I, you know, I've I've seen it. I've been a hunter. Yeah. You know, in in one iteration. <laughs> That's in real. one iteration of, of my life, you know, especially growing up with a single mother that did everything for me to the point where I was like, stop doing anything. I don't mm. want you to do anything anymore. Stop it. Mm. Mm. You know, and, and I, I think the reason why a film like this is important is because of the fact that the dynamic of masculine and feminine in this day and age is changing mm -hmm. in the sense that women are becoming more balanced. We can't, you know, we're not expecting women to inhabit all femininity. Mm -hmm. Men are becoming more balanced, but in the same, in the same, same token, I feel like men, men are losing their manhood and it's no, and, and there's a responsibility that comes with self in that, you know, there's no one else to blame, but it's so, uh, men don't know how to deal with women who are successful or want to be successful nowadays, or at least that's, that's what I've been seeing a little bit. So I, I find this, I find this story super interesting. Yeah, no, thank you. And I'm glad that you're in it. You do a great job of countering, we won't give it away, but countering that. But the thing is, what's so interesting, a, a, a film person, a, one of my dear friends, she's like a film person, she said, the movie felt like a meditation. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about when I was writing the movie and, and, and it is really a meditation of like healing because you know women are healing constantly. They have to naturally, scientifically, right? Every month. And, you know, they, they got to heal from like relationships in their life and identity, you know, but men, we rarely see men heal. And in real life, we rarely understand what healing is. We, we go out, play sports, do some physical and we good and we keep it moving. But just like how you're able to connect to your evolution as a man, how your mom played a huge impact with doing everything for you. I'm sure you're constantly being mindful of, are you healing in all aspects of your life, especially when you engage in relationships and intimacy. So, yeah. you know, this movie is basically my, uh, you know, view on what would it look like a guy like Hunter to heal? And because we really don't. And I mean, do you think men heal often as much as women? Just that. I, I think you brought up the best point, which is responsibility. There's healing mm. in taking responsibility. Mm. It's okay mm. to feel a certain way as a man. It's okay to cry as a man. It's okay to uh, um, be upset, be frustrated, be angry. Those, those are all human emotions. Mm -hmm. To be the vulnerable. Second, yeah, vulnerability. It's, they all fall under that umbrella. The second we lose our responsibility, and what I mean by that is taking responsibility for ourselves in how we feel, in mm -hmm. how we navigate our lives, in the choices that we make, we mm -hmm. lose the opportunity to heal. Mm -hmm. The responsibility is the healing. And not being afraid of that process but not being afraid of how people react to that because i was having a conversation where you know men we want to be strong around women because women want to feel safe right yeah and so to be the man to open the door to provide right that's like how we're able to create safetyness men we need to feel safe too you know and one thing that messes up any situation is ego you know ego which men, we, we dance in that world a lot with physical. It's like your whole day could be messed up if men, if we were really to tap into our ego all the time, like somebody bumps into us. It's like, yo, what the, you know, like mm -hmm. somebody honks, like we're triggered to like, yo, it's going to go physical, bro. Like chill out, give me my space. 
but it's like, are we giving ourselves the safe space to like be, you know, and to like, it's not just about crying, but like to feel and to be like, but to go within. And the whole movie is about shadow work, you know, which yeah. is like, you know, you, you may have to watch it a few times to feel the hints, but you know, when I got into shadow work or understanding what that was, it showed me like, you know, we got to give our space and that freedom to like heal, but like, we want to feel safe too. So in life, you know, it's being open enough with your partner who you're with or your friends, your family, first and foremost, to be like, I want this to be a safe space. This is kind of what I'm going through. FYI, just look out, just or let, allow me to be. Versus like, before we even get there, we judge ourselves as men and we're like, we're supposed to be this, we're supposed to do this. And all these things are like appropriate, right? For discovery, but at the end of the day, it's so important for us to like give ourselves that space to be like, this is how I feel right now. Let me own it. Let me take out everything that that doesn't make sense. But I gotta do the dirty work to let it all out, so I could clean them. Be like, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, that's a little bit of there. And then you, you only could do that without judging yourself. But men, we we don't want to come off soft. We don't want to. We want to be hard. We want to, you know, have the most girls. We want to have the nicest car. We want to do all these things that society, you know, tells us we have to have in order to be a man. But that real dirty work with ourselves to like show up as a human being who happens to be a man, who happens to be this color or religion, or, but at the end of the day, the human being we got to be, you know, we got to be, and we have to understand what we're being and then treat others how you want to be treated. So that's my effort with Venus as a boy. It's very, you know, that's people, you know, it's not just a movie to me. It's not just entertainment. It's one of those things where it's like, I really want to, you know, be vulnerable enough to expose that. And hopefully not only men, but women, feel like they can look at themselves in a mirror and figure if, you know, if they're Hunter, if they're like Ashley or character, they're like, you know, Hendrix or Ruby. Yeah, you know, I mean, well, there's the, we're running, we're all, we're almost running out of time. There's two, yeah, things. But I just realized that I had like a, <laughs> um, first for people- just done this shit on the phone, bro. For, for people who don't know, nah, you we gotta, I gotta see your face intimacy sir um for people who don't know can you touch on shadow work yeah so basically shadow work are is all the things that we ignore in life you know it's like darkness reveals light so as much as we're light light is one of those things where you know it's only there because there's darkness and i think we all have a lot of, we all have all deal with a darkness within. And it goes back to like the Peter Pan joint with like the shadows doing what it wants to do. It's like, we want to suppress that so much in our life to where we're not ever really being truthful. And mm -hmm. we're really not like healing to the level where it's like, what are the parts about me that I don't like and that people would not like? And we put so much effort to hide that from others. And if we would like to really deal with it, then our decisions, our micro decisions will make sense. So in the movie, I wanna give it away. Hunter does a lot of micro decisions in the movie. We don't wanna give it away, but as you see that micro decision got him to that area where he wanted to get to in life, which is mm -hmm. it opened up a new better door However, he had to go through the shadow work and in the film, that's why the app plays a thing is like, every time he's challenged with a decision and we all are in life with shadow work, when you do shadow work to understand why we react to certain things, it's really sitting down with that inner child and sitting down with those beats in life where it's really affected us and then we realize like most people, when you're adults, we're not even, we're not even like conscious of them. So we're just acting out and we're just 
constantly like hiding all these things about ourselves and not being liberated in like who we are. Hmm. So the shadow work and then the black Madonna is like, you know, it's funny because shadow work is so spiritual too. It's like, that's the mother, right? We all come from like the feminine. And so a lot of times, you know, men, we deal with alienating our feminine energy and just, you know, staying in the, the masculine energy, which is like strong and powerful, but it's also like egotistical. And, and so shadow work is that process that you take with yourself where it's not you giving an excuse, you know, you're not giving an excuse for the way you deal with people in the world. You're more so giving yourself a, a, an environment to discuss these things with who you are today and realize like, you don't have to be controlled um, by those past experiences. Therefore, you don't have to fear, you know, who you are because who you are is great. And some of those things about yourself may add to the beautiful, amazing being you are because you're not judging them. Mm. So, so it's, it's full, it's full acceptance is what you're saying. Yeah. But that's like, what is full acceptance, right? Like that, I think that's a lifetime journey. I think it's, it's beyond full acceptance. It's an understanding and a grace step by step. You know what I'm saying? Like step by step to engage hmm. with your spirit, your community, the world, your job, your career. Cause full acceptance is kind of like, it's easy. Like I fully accept all the shit, like oh, all of it, you know, versus like, what am I tolerating and, and what am I not doing to show up? Mm. And what is holding me back to show up? Mm. If that makes sense. Cause I think full acceptance is like, that's a really hard space to get to. Maybe you're there, but no, I think, I mean, I, I mean, there, there's a, there's a acceptance with anything, right. You know, it's in the, it's in that prayer, even, you know, accept the things that I, I can't change. And, you know, uh, I think, I think acceptance is, ever evolving you know what i mean it's it's not you know it, it's the opposite of dwelling on something yeah but i and i think i think we're saying the same thing i think yeah yeah i think i think so too but um, i think i think that acceptance thing just to you could cut this out because you trigger something i think with acceptance control it's like you don't really have to put work to accept things uh, okay. I, 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 can, I can see how one could be lazy in their acceptance. Yeah. Yes. I, I understand. I understand that. Um, but there, there comes a time where you reach, or at least I feel you, you reach a space of neutrality mm -hmm. where you're able to understand and, ex you know, I was talking to my mentor the other day. And he's, you know, and, and we, were uh, we were talking about uh, the best part about getting older is the growth mm -hmm. and acceptance of, of who I am as a human being, mm -hmm. you know? And he's like, and he, he said, hey, you know, I used to always make fun of you for being like a, a, a nerd, low key. Like a lot of people don't get to see this side of you, but for me, it's, it's one of the most amazing parts of you. So, mm -hmm. so continue to accept that part of yourself. And, you know, and, and, and I, I've been thinking about that. It's like embracing, you know, maybe that's the better word, embracing who you are. Embracing, embracing yeah. Embracing, uh, you know, who you are as a human being from, from the inside to the outside, you know? And that's, so that's what the shadow work sounds like to me. Yeah. Embracing yeah. all parts of you. I like yes. embracing all parts of you. And then once you embrace it, then you can accept it. There we are. You don't have to accept it. You can be like, hey, you know, like, uh, yeah, we, you know, you, you embrace and in, in the things you want to grow in, you, you continue to grow, but you don't, you know, you don't beat yourself up for those, th those spaces you get to grow in. You, you embrace it and you go, okay, this is what I get to work on. Let's move forward. Mm -hmm. accept mm -hmm. embrace 
whatever, whatever description you want to give to it that supports your growth. Mm -hmm. um, all right, last question. Venus is a boy. Mm -hmm. And I feel a lot of people can, oh. can learn from this simple question in regards to making a project, creating something, being an artist. Are you, ha are you happy with how the film turned out wholeheartedly? Absolutely. Wouldn't change anything about it. Amazing. And that's not even being arrogant. It's like, I just wouldn't change anything about it. There's movies that I would have done things different, but this one, I know that I'm, that I'm right. Cause I'm like, that movie's made, like, I couldn't even do that. If I like, I couldn't even do that if I wasn't as like, and it's crazy you say that because everything didn't go the way I wanted it to. Yeah. So that's, that's why it's real when I say it, because I'm like, it's not the direction I was going to go casting. It's not like all the locations that I, that I wanted, you know, when you're making movies at this small price, it's a big price for, you know, in the, in, in the world, but as far as like filmmaking is so much, right? Yeah. But no, I would, I am very happy with it. And, you know, I got to take any of my movie no more. I mean, once we release it, it's out to the world. And like I said, people are going to love it or hate it. And yeah. I'm like, go with that because I'm really not trying to make things if they're not truthful to me. Yeah. Right. I love that answer. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, what do you think? Huh? I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm joking. No, no, no. I thought at first, I, like low key, I was like, I don't think Control likes this movie. But I was like, I'm not going to worry about that. You're in it, and hopefully you you get some jobs from it. But no, you know, man, I'm learning as I grow in this industry. Uh, I'm at a place where it's not about getting a bunch of jobs anymore. Mm -hmm. It's it's about my voice and who I get to be as an artist. Yep. And that, and that's, that's it. And, uh, you know, I, I auditioned a lot and I've come close to a lot of things, but I realized a lot of those things that I was auditioning for, I didn't even want in the first place. I just wanted to tell everybody that I got a job. I booked it. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I thought the film was a beautiful piece of art. Uh, I, I felt like it was very, you know, very rarely um, do you do I get to watch a film where I can see that this is the artist's voice. Usually you watch a film, you can tell that uh, there was a lot more influences in the project in regards to, you know, you could watch, I, I could watch something and be like, oh, wow, this film's going this way. And then a, a certain piece will sneak in and I'll, I'll be like, I bet you the director wasn't the one who made that decision. Or <laughs> I don't think the writer intended for that scene to go that way. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the, 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 the blessing of making a project like this is, you know, if you're strong, if, a, if the artist is strong enough, they have an opportunity to completely own their voice authentically. Um, and that's what I, and that's what I enjoyed the most about the project aside from, um, God, I thought Trace was so good. Yeah, she's great. She, every moment she's she, crazy. and from the, just having from the cut, like this most subtle, effortless, real moments that weren't, I don't want to call them comedic moments because they were real life. Like no, this they were stuff, funny. It, it was funny, but this is some shit your friend would say. No, exactly. Like, I mean, you, fuck, you fucking up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. a, this is what a close friend, it just felt real, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was, I mean, from Jill to Olivia to you, you know, 
everybody had such such powerful moments in this film, honest moments, and and and, and we got to peek into so many different walks of life from from who I played in the character in as yeah your realist moments the one I mean if you look at all what's funny is that your first line got a big laugh in the screening and it was interesting because we don't hear we're watching the movie with the same people but like your first line people laughed and then the one like it's funny the funniness is coming from real moments which is like interesting yes yes someone was trying to be funny and and then the music oh. uh, you know uh, yes 100 percent. i gotta touch on this the music mm -hmm. when somebody is you know i feel like there's a moments where people are possessed they become a vessel for the work it's almost like i don't know how to explain it, it is them but there's like a greater energy that is possessing the individual to put out this piece of artwork and the music that you and your brother did. Yeah. I knew, I knew it was going to be good. You know, it wasn't, I don't want to say I was surprised, but it surpassed my expectations. Yeah. And that's very deliberate because I mean, my brother did such a fantastic job and working with your sibling is like a lot, you know? Yes. Um, but we grew, but it's our DNA. And Aaron was seeing the movie come together. And I wanted to make a beautiful movie with beautiful visuals, with a plot that was very dang, no crazy acting. Cause that's the thing, this movie, there's no crazy acting. In it. Like no one is, no one is like, oh, that scene, you know? I mean, the last scene people really been commenting about with me and Estelle, but that was very much like deliberate and mild to be like, you know, Hunter has to get to a place where he submits. But the music was one of the things that we really wanted to kind of, I don't say make the movie, but like give it that, like, like it is a big part of the movie because I would listen and do sound notes with just playing in my car. And when you hear the cadence from the other actors and the dialogue, you could just listen to this as a on a podcast, like an hour yeah. 45 minutes, just listen, because it feels like a live playlist. Yeah. So that was very, very, very everything in this movie was very, very deliberate to be like, you know, it is what it is. That's why I wouldn't change it. Let me yeah. ask you this. Did you did you at one point did not like Hunter as a person? Not at all. Uh, for me, I just read a review that someone said they didn't like him. So I was like, no, no, I think, I think the best part about Hunter is he's so relatable that in moments he is his own worst enemy. And when you watch something, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like you know, I used to hear this term a lot thrown around. If you spot it, you got it, mm -hmm. which means a lot of the times when we, when, there's things that we don't like about individuals that are in front of us. And a lot of those times, the things we don't like is the thing that's being suppressed inside of us personally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So we can, I, I can see moments of self-sabotage in Hunter mm -hmm. um, that I could personally relate to. So, so it was, it was real. That's how I feel. I, that's how I felt about Hunter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was real, you know, the, and, and, and being an artist is hard, especially a painter. Yeah. To, to, to <laughs> you know, cause a lot of the times, the hardest part about being an artist is being one of those artists that's trying to guess what other people want. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, I'm going to do this because this is what i'm being called to do this is what's speaking through my soul mm -hmm. right and i watched hunter battle that because he never wanted to do something because he thought others were going to like it but there was still a fear of success and i i feel like that's extremely relatable mm -hmm. that's my interpretation no that's good yeah that's good and we'll uh, see
It's going to be out into the world soon. So Yes. So let's talk about that. Where will people be able to see Venus as a boy? Well, we're still making decisions, but I know it's going to be this summer. Mm -hmm. And going to have a cool premiere. And, you know, hopefully... Hopefully we get out the way we want it to, but it's definitely, unless something crazy, uh, if we get like the, like this summer. Yeah. Okay. So in all of that uh, vagueness, where can people follow you to be updated so that they will know when the movie's coming out? I want all the handles and I would like you to spell them out so people can type it down, write it down. On, you're gonna do like a little screen thing and put it on the side. You know what I mean? We will do. We will do that. You put a digital in the court. It's gonna be. In we'll this we'll do that, but yeah. some, it's nice to have the artist say it. Yeah. Um, you could follow the movie at Vab Movie at V as in Victor, A is an Apple, A is an Apple, B is in Boy. Movie. Yeah. M O V I E. You could follow anything you want about the movie there. Okay. And support and watch, watch it. You know what I'm saying? Watch and it. And then what about and then what about you? Oh, and my uh my Instagram is at the Hodge. Oh no, damn, that's not as an email. <laughs> it's uh you want to give your social security number too? Yeah, I know my social security, my address. Hey, <laughs> uh, what's my handle? Oh, the Ty Hodges. At, isn't it? Yeah, the Ty Hodges. Okay. Uh, that's me. And, and your you company? Can buy all the good things. And your company? Oh, and at Lost Ones Co. Lost Ones Co. Like yeah. Co. Co Trail. Nice. If you Trail. guys can't spell Lost Ones, you got issues. L O S T. -O no, no, no. I wasn't going to give it away. Oh, they can spell that on their own. Yeah. And it's going to be a little, <laughs> thing, right? a little thing right there. Control, this is amazing, yo. I love you, brother. You're so talented. You're so gifted. I'm so thankful uh, to have you in my life. I'm honored by the stuff you do. And this is going to be great. And I'm glad I was one of your guests. And you're amazing, man. Thank you so much, my friend. And I want to tell you, you inspire me. I appreciate you. Uh, I, I am always, always looking to you to see how I could personally grow as an artist and as a human being. So thank you for being Same. in my life as a brother. And uh, thank you for coming on my podcast. Yes. Connected AF. Connected AF. Right Much here. Love, everybody. Get on this show. Hey, yo, who you want to interview next? Get on this show. Kanye. We'll, we'll, we'll hey, talk. Kanye, Kanye, Gemini. He's a <laughs> he Gemini. I'm a Gemini. Yo, get some Much love. love. To them. Connected yeah. AF in association with Cool Friends Podcast. I appreciate all of you for listening. Stay tuned because you will be able to listen on all the platforms, Spotify, iTunes, and more. Talk to you soon. Much love. <laughs>